Hi, in this uh, problem, uh, in, in the fundamental problems, page 365, uh, chapter 7, seven the seventh problem, it asks us to determine the shear and moment as a function of x, so that's the first thing. After we find the uh, shear and moment as function of the length of the beam, in other words, uh, we need to draw the shear and moment diagrams. So now the purpose for finding the shear and moment diagrams for a beam is to provide graphical description of how the internal shear and moment vary throughout the length of the beam. To get these diagrams, we will use method of sections to determine shear and moment as function of x. In this problem, we have a beam. A beam is a structural member designed to support loads applied perpendicular to their axis. So the first step that you want to do is you want to find the support reactions. So we want to identify the supports that is uh, you know, that we have along the beam. So in this problem, we have this support at A. So, but before we start, why do we want to determine the reaction forces? In, in here, we want to determine, well, sorry, why we want to uh, identify the, the, the supports, because these supports will determine all the reactive forces and couple moments acting on the beam and and so we can resolve all the forces into components acting perpendicular and parallel to the beam so at a we have fixed beam support at fixed beam support we have three reaction forces or in other words uh, the or the, the fixed beam support restrain or prevent the movement in the vertical, horizontal, and moment or rotation. When a degree of freedom is restrained, we will have a corresponding reaction or reactive forces or couple at that support location. So in this problem, you know, at A, the, f the first reaction force, because a fixed beam restrains the movement of the beam at A to move in the vertical direction, so it will create a reaction or reactive force in the vertical direction. So this is, uh, or in the y direction, so A sub y. And here we make an assumption regarding the direction of the reaction force vector. When we use the equilibrium equations and we find that, that the value for a sub y is negative, it means that our initial assumption was wrong. Again, we, uh, we will assume that our moment is counterclockwise, which is positive, and this is the moment at a. Now, <clears throat> in the first slide, we mentioned something related to internal shear and internal moments caused by external loads. So what I'm going to discuss in here, I will go a little bit over stuff that's not related to this problem directly, but the purpose behind it is, is, is to have an idea, the relationship between the external forces and the internal forces that, that can act on a beam or any other structural member. So this axis, we call it the central axis because it runs through the center of the beam. Or we can call this the longitudinal axis because it runs along or uh, because it runs along the length of the beam. Now, one of the forces that can be applied on a beam like this is called an axial load or a, sin, uh, or, a sin, uh, or a concentric load. You know, from its name, this force acts 
along the beam at the center of the beam. These types of forces, when you study mechanics of material, they cause the beam, in case of tension, to elongate, or in case of compression, to shorten the length. So that is one. Of, so this is an external force that cause internal changes in the beam. Another um, uh, type of load that we have in here is this. This this load we call it the uh, eccentric load. Eccentric load, you know, from from what you can see, this is a load that run along the axis of the beam, but it will be offsetted from the center of the beam, and this external load cause something called buckling. That is something that you will learn more about in mechanics of material. So this eccentric load, this type of loading can cause the material to experience both tensile and compressive forces, leading to complex stress patterns within the material. And again, this load is not applied through the centroid. So the question is, oh, then what about this force right here, this 6 kN force, or the, this A sub Y? These forces, as you can see, they are being applied perpendicular at a 90 degree angle to the central axis or longitudinal axis. These types of loads are called transverse loads. So just like the axial load, it caused the beam, in case of tension, elongation, in case of compression, it shortened the beam, or a centric load that you know can make the beam experience internal, uh, for internal internal shear and uh, normal forces. Um, so these, so we learned about so this the same thing for a beam, in here. These loads will cause something called the internal shear forces. So transverse loads, that which mean the loads that's being applied parallel to the, sorry, a perpendicular to the beam axis. When we make a cut, as shown in here, it will generate, it will produce, it will cause internal shear forces in the beam. Now, what about moments? Moments will create, will produce something called the. Uh, it will it will cause internal normal forces. Normal forces act perpendicular to the cross section cut, as you can see in here. And internal shear uh, uh, along the cut or oriented vertically. Now, as you can see, internal normal forces, it will cause the beam to generate internal moments. So that is why we want to find the external loads, like the transverse loads, and we want to find the external moments or couples acting on the beam. So we can find the internal shear forces and the internal uh, and, and the internal moment, which is caused by the internal normal forces. And in, in order for us to find the support reactions, we need to utilize the equilibrium equation, where the sum of the external loads in the x direction or the y direction equal to zero. And we want to find the uh, external uh, the moments, the sum of the external moments acting on the beam equal to zero. So, all right. So, in here we want to consider the equilibrium of the beam in the vertical direction. So, the sum of the external forces in the vertical direction, where uh, up is positive and down is negative, so a sub y minus 6, a sub y minus 6 equal to 0. So from this equation, we can solve for the reaction force in the vertical direction, a sub y. So 6 will move to the other side of the equation, and that will give us a 6 kilonewton. So now we can erase this and replace it with 6 kilonewton. 
Next, we want to find the sum of the moments at A where the convention counterclockwise is positive. It's a good practice to draw uh, a circle, the center of the circle at the center of the location where you're taking the moment at, which is A. And you can think of this circle as a bicycle wheel. And what we want to do is we want to sum the um, moments in this beam. So we have the moment at A, and we have the moment, which is 6 times the perpendicular distance to the axis of rotation. In this case, we're taking the moment at A, and that distance is 3. So that's what we have in here, the uh, moment at A minus 6 times 3. And from this equation, we can find the moment at A. But here the question we need to ask, is the negative moment 6 times 3 is correct or not? So let's take a look at this force vector, 6 kN. And let's move this force vector right here. When you apply a force at the end of, of this circle, it will cause the circle to go to which direction? Clockwise. And clockwise is opposite to this, which will be negative. So the negative in here is correct. So now we can solve for this. So 6 times 3 is 18. kilonewton times meter. So now we can erase the moment at A and replace it with 18 kilonewton times meter. All right. So now we will take an arbitrary cut between A and B. So now what we want to do is we want to find the internal shear forces as a function of x or as a function of the length of the beam and we want to find the internal moments as a function of x or the uh, as a as a function of the length of the beam so here what we will do is we will take an arbitrary cut uh, between a and b at a distant x from end a and then consider the equilibrium so in here, we will have we will start from zero and go to a certain distant x, and this right here is our cut, and this our certain distant x or at at point x. This reaction force we found to be six kilonewton. This external moment is eighteen kilonewton. And what we want to do is we want to find the vertical, or which is the shear force, as a function of x or, or as a function of the length of the beam. And here we also assume that our internal moment at x is positive, and we want to find its, va its function along the beam. So what we will do is we will consider the equilibrium of the above sec section in the vertical direction. So here we have the 6 kN up positive, correct, and the internal shear force down negative. So when we solve for this, we can we will get that the force in the x direction will equal to 6. And and this is the the you know because the this cut is between A and B, so this is the function for the shear, internal shear force from 0 to 3 meter. Then we will take the sum of the moment at x, where counterclockwise is positive. We will draw a circle at the center of, the, of x. You know. Then we will find the moments. So here, the positive external moment, 18 and then minus 6 times the perpendicular distance to where we're taking the moment, which is an x direction, plus the internal moment at the cut, uh, the moment at x. So here we said it's 18, because, you know, it's going counterclockwise, and our assumption when we did the equilibrium equation was correct. And 6 kilonewton, which is this force vector, if we move it here, it will cause the circle to go 
count, uh, cl uh, clockwise, which is negative. So that's why we have negative 6x. And this moment, internal moment, we assume that it will be a counterclockwise positive moment. So right here, we want to find this moment. So moment at x equal to 6x minus 18. And again, this one, this is the moment as a function of the length of the beam from between A and B, from 0 to 3 meter. Now we will, I will represent the beam with this dashed line that run along the center of the beam. So here we found our external loads that's been, that is uh, applied on the beam. And from it, we found the internal shear and internal moment functions as a function of the length of the beam. So now we will draw a line here that starts at A, another line that ends at B, and this horizontal line that, that runs uh, parallel to the length of the beam, where it starts from 0 meter and, and ends at 3 meter. And here we want to draw the shear force, so we will use our shear force function. So at 0, we have an external force of 6 kN right here. Now the shear force starting from zero after we after zero all the way till three uh, that we will have constant shear force of six kilonewton then we have an applied external load at the end of the beam at b and it will bring it back to zero the zero value in here so now we close the diagram so this is our shear diagram Next, we will draw a parallel, uh, so, uh, yeah, parallel horizontal line to the length of the beam. Start from 0, end at 3. And we will use the moment as a function of x or as a function of the length of the beam equal to 6x minus 18. So we want to know the moment at 0. So the moment at 0, we will plug the 0 in here and it will give us an answer of minus 18. And the moment at 3 meter, we plug 3 in here and it will give us 0. So at 0, we have minus 18. And the next point, uh, 3, is 0. And as you can see, this function, 6x minus 18, is a, uh, is a function of a, uh, of a line. So we will draw a line from minus 18 all the way to, to 0 in here. So this will be your moment. So this is our shear, this is our moment diagram, and these are the equations that we used to draw these diagrams. Thank you very much. Have a good day.